time of year for apples is upon us and I am lucky enough to have more apples than I know what to do with. So I thought I'd share this fantastic recipe that's got only one ingredient. Apples. Now I'm going to make a beautiful natural cider. Now when I say natural, I mean there's no added sugars, there's no added sterilising agents, there's no sulphates to it or anything like that. There's no added yeast to it. We're going to use the natural yeast that's on the outside of these apples. All we're going to do is be careful with the blend of our apples. I've got these apples from my garden which are a little, little bit sweet, a little bit sour. So a little bit sweet and sour there, sweet and acidic let's say. And then we've got these beautiful little bitter apples here which I've scrumped from down the road. Now I'm going about 30% of these and about 70% of these and I think that's going to give me like a medium dry cider which would be fantastic. But I mean either way it turns out I'm not bothered because it's a beautiful taste of the apples that come from my garden and the few that I've nicked. It's really important not to wash these apples because the yeast that are on the outside is going to ferment all the beautiful sugars that's going to come out of the juice in these. Now all I'm going to do with these apples is just cut out any major blemishes. I don't know if you can see that. See a little, little blemish there? Now that I'd probably cut out, but if it's something like a bruising, I'd just leave it. Now we're going to make a nice big batch of cider, so it's kind of safety in numbers. A, little, a few little blemishes here and there will go unnoticed. So that's my main reason for doing a big batch of cider. We're, we're looking to hit about 20 litres. You just need these bits of equipment. Now a bucket with a cheesecloth on top of it, a demijohn or fermentation bucket that you can fit an airlock to. Um, optional is one of these. It's a hydrometer. It tells you the amount of sugar you've got in it. And with it you can work out how alcoholic the cider is. But I'm not too bothered about these things. I use it to tell me when it stopped fermenting. Um, if it's strong in alcohol, great. If it's not so strong in alcohol, it's not so, that's all right, that's okay. The missus will enjoy it more. <laughs> anyway, I need some help to juice these and I know exactly where I'm gonna get it. Well, that took a lot longer than I thought it was gonna take. Crikey, it's now the wee hours of the morning, but we've got all this fantastic apple juice, 20 liters of this lovely stuff. And before I go any further, I forgot to mention, make sure everything you use is sterilized. You can either do this with boiling water or sterilizing solution. I opted for boiling water because I'm trying to keep it all nice and natural and everything like that. Now we strained all that juice through a cheesecloth and put it into this beautiful demijohn. Look at it, isn't it? It's such a beauty. A couple of quid from the junk shop. I can't believe my luck. Now I've popped in the hydrometer. So it's reading 1055 and that means it's by the time it's fermented, it's going to come out about 6-7% in alcohol, which is perfect. Just what I want. Now if it reads lower than that, you need to add a little bit of sugar till it reads about 1055. Rule of thumb for adding sugar is add one tablespoon for every four and a half litres and that will gain you one point in the hydrometer. So I'm sure you guys can work out the math on that, but hopefully you won't need it so that you've got this beautiful natural little cider. Now all that's left for me to do is pop on the lid, the little rubber cap here. On goes our airlock. And don't forget to put a little bit of water in. Make sure your water's boiled or you can always use a little bit of sterilising solution as well. But I prefer just to use boiled water. No additives there. No way it's going to creep in. We're going to pop our lid on there, like so. Now we'll leave this in a warm place for about a day. Get that fermentation going. Then we're going to put it into. Well, I'm going to put it into my basement, which is about 15 degrees centigrade, and it will take about 10 to 14 days. You'll know when it's done when the bubbles stop or the hydrometer reading remains the same for three days. And I'll see this little beauty in about two weeks. Well, that actually took four weeks, and not because I forgot it, just because it took its time to ferment. And that's okay, it's a natural cider. It's always best to go by when it stops fermenting rather than the time it should take, otherwise you're going to get some exploding bottles later on down the line. We've all been there, well, I've been there anyway. As you can see, our airlock stopped bubbling, our hydrometer stayed still for a couple of days, um, the natural yeast of form and slowly sunk to the bottom and formed a beautiful sediment and our cider is starting to clear. This tells me that it's time to transfer this into a clean demijohn before the sediment taints the flavour of it. I do this with a tube I've turned into a siphon. Here it is in a pan of sterilised water and what I've done is just cover it with water in a pan with a lid 
brought it up to the boil and let it cool down so it's all totally sterilised in there and hopefully the tube is submerged in water. And this is the idea that we keep the airlock tight or you can always squeeze it. I, I, I tend to do both. And pop it in there like so, just so it's above the level of sediment. Now I use a siphon for two reasons. The first one is because you can aim it down the side of your bottle here. And the second is you can pour yourself a drink quite easily. <laughs> just to, for testing of course. Alright, the water's run out now. It's gone to cider. And let's just start pouring it down the side of our demijohn like so. Now it's really important to pour it down the edge of the demijohn rather than straight in because you don't want to mix any extra air in there because that will oxidise our cider and turn it a funny colour. Now this will take a while but stay with it because you've got to make sure the siphon doesn't pick up any of the sediment on the bottom. I think now it's an excellent opportunity to have a wee taste. Still a bit rough around the edges but it's got a way to go yet. We're going to mature it in this large demijohn for about six months and that will make it mellow out a bit. Now that's all done, it's just left behind this slushy sediment which is swimming around there. Now don't throw that away if you're into making bread, it makes a beautiful sourdough starter. But anyway, that's another recipe. This next part seems a little strange, but bear with me, it's vital to maturing your cider. We're going to replace the cider we've lost in the sediment with some water we've boiled and allowed to cool. The more air that's inside this bottle, the more likely it is our cider will turn and oxidise, and we don't want that. There we are, that's it. Our cider's now topped up. It doesn't have to be all the way to the top, but it just needs to make sure there's not an excess amount of air left in the bottle. We'll pop the lid on, which has been sterilised as well. Try not to touch it too much. Nice and airtight. Now keep it in your cellar, or something to that effect, for six months, let it mature, let it mellow, and then bottle it up and drink it. And if you're anything like me, it'll be the longest six months of your life. If it takes four weeks, it takes four weeks. You can't rush a good cider. Oh, I have to wait six months. Oh. Why can't I do that 20 minutes ago?